back I got a few regrets on my own She had a diamond and I'm beauty all her own Where are you now, girl? You know you got that special place I always see you with lustness in my face Regrets I've had my lonely nights And a whole lot of wasted time As you're approaching and you're flying in you just want to keep yourself kind of coming down on a nice gentle slope and you want to come in and uh, uh, you don't want to come in like this and you don't want to come in two nose up if you come in two nose up what's going to happen is the arrestor system the code that arrests the plane will actually cause your aircraft to tilt even more back and it will probably knock your engine off. You probably will survive, but as you can see what happened to this plane over here was that exact thing happened. The the I came in on too much of a nose up and it tilted back and knocked my engine off. Um, another thing uh, is you don't want to come down too nose forward because when it, when it comes down and you get close to the ground it applies a couple different forces and it also puts your brakes on. So if it puts your brakes on and your nose down, you'll probably do a nose dive and break whatever's on the front of your plane off. So if you look at the design of my planes, you're going to see something familiar between, like I have a two or three different carrier um, aircraft designs. And look, we get a nice little bobbing motion in the water here. That's pretty cool. Anyways, um, you can see how I put the gear as far forward hanging as possible that stops the plane from, you know, if I put the gear back here, it'll nose dive and you lose the front of the plane and it breaks and all that other bad stuff. Um, if you take a look at the back of the planes, I'll take a look at the back of this plane, um, you're going to notice that my rear wheels hang out off, the, hang out off the, the, the wings as much as possible and that's for the exact same purpose. When If I come in just a little bit too much nose up and it wants to yank my plane, it's not going to impact the engine as easily. And another suggestion I make, and I haven't done on this plane yet, is actually put a strut to the engine. So, so pick a hard point on the plane. Uh, I do have some struts um, probably underneath, going from the wings to the uh, body, and from the main vertical surface to the body. In a lot of planes, you don't see guys strutting, but in in a carrier plane, I would suggest you know suggest strutting strongly because it, it is subject to more rigorous uh, uh, carrier planes are always a little more tough than regular planes are in my mind anyways because they, they have to survive in harsher conditions and take off quickly and land quickly so they're you know they have to be a rugged aircraft one is are you within a certain distance and two how fast are you going if you're going too fast it doesn't bother with you or if you're too far away it doesn't bother with you because you could just do, be doing a high-speed flyby and you don't want the system to arrest you. So what it does essentially, the way I have it set up right now, is when you're coming in like this, if you are within, I think it's three or four meters off the deck, and you're going under 50 meters per second, um, it will arrest the plane. So you want to make sure that when, you're, when, when the arresting effect is going to happen down at about this level here, you want to make sure that, as I said before, your pitch is not too high and your pitch is not too negative. So you don't want too, too positive of a pitch, you don't want too negative of a pitch. 
Um, and, and aside from that, it, ca it captures the planes amazingly. I, I do have the video of before of it working. It's actually a little bit better now. Um, these aircraft here, uh, I landed all three of them on here. One of them, I knocked the engine off. If I come down in here and I open up the crew hatch and I EVA a guy, okay, down we go. Space bar. I can walk around. I can run around if I want to. Woo! Jump. You know, he lands on his face. He gets back up. So it works. It works fine. There's nothing wrong with the EVA on the carrier now. Um, the only thing is, and, I, and what I did actually when I landed all these aircraft was I took this guy and I put him in this aircraft. I took this guy and put him in this aircraft. And I took this guy and put him in this aircraft. I uh, unloaded the game uh, and reloaded the game. Came back in and all the aircraft were still workable. I took a little truss. Uh, stock truss from the game and I put it lengthwise on the ground and I put a clampatron on top of it um, and then what I did with my other not this aircraft but with my other design of, air, uh, design of aircraft is I put the clampatron on the bottom this this one here has the intake hump so it's probably not gonna work very well but anyways I put the clampatron on the bottom of the other plane um, <clears throat> and uh, what you do is just drive the plane over top of it and when you when you see it kind of trying struggling to connect drop the gear and the plane will actually connect to the carrier and you can refuel. Uh, if I were to take a guy out of here and leave him on the deck and drive the boat around he would fall over and he would kind of stick to the deck. Um, later on if I were to quit the game he would disappear and be gone forever. If however before I left the game I stopped the carrier went back to the guy laying on the ground and mo walked around with him for a little bit and put him away after he'd be fine. He, he wouldn't disappear. So if you move the carrier while the guy's on the deck and you quit the game before you use that guy again. Um, I have come a little bit away uh, in the last week or so thanks to a couple people um, in the KSP Modders uh, IRC channel. Uh, they've helped me a lot and I'm very grateful for it. I know I'm a nag sometimes but uh, I have goals like everybody else has goals and uh, I can't wait for somebody to make me stuff. I'm, I'm eager to learn and eager to, to do things on my own, but uh, I ask lots of questions and sometimes people get tired of me, I think. so. <laughs> Anyways, it's all for, for, for the love of this and uh, for, for everybody else out there to have a good experience playing the game. So here's my aircraft and I've noticed that with the new release of uh, KSP, I get a heck of a lot better frame rates. Right now I'm getting 16 while recording. So uh, I find that that's amazing compared to what it was just doing before. So now I've activated my reversing engine. The reversing engine is the one that comes with the carrier parts. It's right in here. It's a little bit wonky and I'm going to look at it. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost like elastic -y or something. It, it stretches a little bit, um, w which might be a good thing. But what I've done, because it's not going to snap off, but uh, what I've done is uh, um, I've strutted from the wing to the front cockpit just to make sure nothing moves. Adds air brakes on this thing. And it just keeps it at about between 26 and 34 and I can just glide it right in. It's beautiful. Um, and then you just learn where to keep your throttle. So I have uh, the brake on. What we want to do is we want to make sure that, um, uh, that the landing system is off on the carrier and how to do that is press the left alt key. Just give it a tap. That will make sure that there's no arresting systems stopping your plane. Uh, then we're going to increase the throttle here and we're going to back up. And this is the reversing engine doing this. You need a reversing engine. You're not going to be able to turn around all over the place. You don't want to have to, to put up with that. So just uh, put a reversing engine somewhere in line with it and, uh, and, and, and design it into your aircraft. And then I'm just going to hit the engine. Once I see the smoke, I let go. This aircraft's pretty good because the gear, the front gear is so far forward that it's not. Okay, so that was a bad example, guys. Sorry. <laughs> There's a little bit of a spot here where it's not connected right. So from the inside, when you're making your carrier, make sure that you have, like, see, I, I have none of these deck surfaces strutted. So if you wanted to, go underneath and see how I double triple strutted all these take one of these out and dedicate it to uh, strutting up so I'm going to uh, get my engine going I'm gonna really 
release the brake, I'm going to take off with this plane. And hopefully we don't have any problems. And put the, the uh, air brakes on. The air brakes give you more lift. And there we are. Now I'll show you where my, my favorite setting is about right there on the throttle. And I'll show you how well it lands. And I may hit the debris, I may not hit the debris, so I may not live with whatever happens. So what we need to do is fly 500 meters from the carrier, which we already are, and that will prime the carrier landing system. Okay, because it expects you to be coming from, it expects you to circle around and then come in for a landing. It doesn't expect you to just like land immediately. So to, for the system to work, um, it needs to be within, you need to leave 500 meters and then go back in within, within uh, 500 meters to prime it. So here we go. So I'm just going to keep myself coming in level as level as possible. You don't have to be perfect. That's why, that's the good thing about this system is you don't have to be an expert landing, you know, at landing. And I just, there it is. Turn off the engine. The brake is already on for you. And sometimes, like I said, because you get some stresses on the, on the carrier deck and there's no struts, um, I'm also going to check the, how, how accurate the, um, collision models are for these and I'll double check that as well but I think they're pretty darn tight um, if this ever happens to you where your gear lands in the into the runway just retract your gear and hopefully your planes not so feeble that it's gonna break all apart if you do that but that's what I do and then I bring the gear back up and we're good to go that only happens on the rare occasions so not a big problem so that shows you the landing system guys I hope you like it and as you can see the light is still on you can see this weird light thing here I know that the KSP lights don't work that great but you can see where the light is actually flashing down below if I hit the left alt key that will turn that system off and now it will not arrest my plane anymore until I get another plane coming in from 500 meters. If I come in from the runway with a brand new brand spanking new plane from way over there, um, as soon as I approach within 500 meters, it will turn the system on again. You just don't want to have anything on the carrier deck. So I hope you guys are excited about this. Um, I, I know like with the, with the new release and the boost in performance we're seeing at least 10 frames per second on, uh, you know, for me, um, I, I see some gains of up to 20 frames per second in some cases. I would never have been able to do this before. Never. I would have been at about 5 or 4 frames per second right now. And I'm recording and I'm at 16 frames per second now. So um, with the changes in KSP for the better um, and with uh, this landing assist, there's no reason why you can't get a plane up and do some practice and and perfect landing with this carrier system i found that it was very difficult for me to land even though i'm a, an expert i'm an expert i'm an expert computer flight guy but not in this game by by any means people know when they watch my live feed i couldn't fly worth crap but that was because i was live streaming and uh, it was really difficult to fly but i've been playing flight sims for for probably close to 25 years and uh, i started with flight simulator one on an 086 so i mean I know flight sims. I, I've had uh, at least two dozen flight sim games in my life. I still have all the manuals for them too. But uh, this is a whole different bag of beans when you're trying to land in KSP on a carrier that's uh, a mod and uh, aircraft is secondary to, in the game, is secondary to rockets and going to other planets. So we're really pushing um, the envelope when it comes to this more so than stuff in space so in this game anyways so uh, leave messages on the board um, post screenshots post videos if you can that's awesome um, and above all have fun um, so so I will get the EVA stuff out I'm gonna put a separate link for the DLL on the actual uh, first uh, post of the thread the, the few parts that are going to be modified the dll for the boat parts dll for the plug-in for walking and uh and the craft file for this carrier i will include in the in, the, in a zip file and put it on the uh, main thread uh for the for the boat parts thanks for watching guys and talk to you soon bye